Hello Algebra 1 students, this is Mr. Wilson, and in this video we're going to be looking at the objective on factoring. Now let's look at question number 9 here. We are asked to completely factor this polynomial. Now when we are asked to factor something, the result is going to look like this. Two sets of parentheses multiplied together. Okay, That's how all of these are going to look. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them in. Now, the question becomes, what do we put into the parentheses? Well, let me remind you of how we do that. First of all, with number 9 here, I hope you notice that we can use the shortcut to factor this. The reason we can use the shortcut is because there is an invisible 1 on the t squared. Now, the shortcut allows us to factor easily. Now, in order to use the shortcut, we need to find the two numbers that multiply to equal c, in this case, the last number, so c is 20, so we need two numbers that multiply to equal 20, what times what equals 20, and then these same two numbers need to add to equal b, so what plus what equals b, in this case is 9. Now in this particular case, you might be able to just see the two numbers that make this work. Um, 4 and 5 work. 4 times 5 equals 20, and 4 plus 5 equals 9. Now as soon as we have those two numbers, the shortcut says that we can just stick the two numbers into the parentheses, like this. In this case we have t's, so t plus 4, and then t plus 5. And that's all there is to it. We have successfully factored that quadratic trinomial. Now let's try the next one. y squared minus 49. Let's factor that. Well, we can use the shortcut again, because there is an invisible 1 multiplying the y squared. So let's use the shortcut. We want to find two numbers that multiply to equal c, which is the last number, negative 49, and then two numbers that add to equal b. Uh, well, what's b? b should be the number that's multiplying the x term, but there is no x term. That means that b is 0 in this case. b is 0. So what two numbers multiply to equal negative 49 and add to equal 0? Well, I hope that you should see that 7 times negative 7 equals negative 49, and 7 plus a negative 7 equals 0. So once we have our magic pair of numbers, we can stick them in right here y is our variable, so y plus 7 times y minus 7. Okay? That's all there is to it. Let's move on to number 11. n squared plus n minus 42. Let's factor that. So we want to find two numbers that multiply to equal negative 42 and add to equal invisible positive 1. Now, again, we can use the shortcut here, thankfully. Let's see, two numbers that multiply to equal negative 42 add to equal 1. Hmm. If nothing is immediately popping out to you, you can try this. Come over here, negative 42, and make a list of factor pairs of negative 42, starting with 1. The 1 times what gives negative 42? Well, negative 42 and then flip the signs, and then move up to 2. 2 times what? Let's see, negative 21, and then flip the signs. Oops. Positive 21. 3? Yeah, 3 can go into negative 42. Um, 3 times, let's see, negative 14, and then negative 3 and positive 14. And let's just continue the list up here. Let's see. 
four? Can four go into negative? No, four can't. How about five? No, six? Yeah. How about six and negative seven? And then negative six and positive seven. Okay? Now, which of these pairs of numbers satisfy these two equations? Well, I hope that you can see it's the last pair right here. Negative six and seven. Negative six times positive seven is negative 42. And negative six plus seven is one. Now again, because we, we can use the shortcut here, we can immediately plug in n minus six and n plus seven. That is the factored form of that quadratic trinomial. Now let's do this last one here. Uh, again, shortcut. So what times what equals negative 24? And then those same two numbers added together equals 5. Let's see. Nothing immediately sticks out to me, so let's make a list of factor pairs of negative 24. 1 and negative 24, negative 1 and positive 24, 2 and negative 12, negative 2 and positive 12, 3 and negative 8, negative 3 and positive 8, 4 and negative 6, and then negative 4 and positive 6. And, that, and that's it. We're done with that list. Let's see, which pair works? Which pair works? How about this one? Negative 3 and positive 8. Because negative 3 times positive 8 is, neg is negative 24. And then negative 3 plus 8 is 5. Now, because we can use a shortcut, we can put in p minus 3 times p plus 8. And we're done. All right, now let's look at number 13. Uh, now notice that I give you a lot more space beneath this problem because we're going to have to do a little bit more work for this one than for the others. Now in this case, the first thing you should see is that we no longer have an invisible 1 here. We have a very visible 3. So we cannot use the shortcut. However, the beginning of the process of factoring this is similar to if we use the shortcut. Here's the difference. We need to take the 4 and the 3 now. So just the first number here and the last one, and we need to multiply them to get 12. And then now, we want to think of two numbers that multiply to equal this 12, and then add to equal the middle number, 8. Multiply those together, and then do this exact same process. Think of two numbers that multiply to give 12, add to give the middle number, 8. Let's see. Let's make a list of factor pairs of 12. 1 and 12. Negative 1 and negative 12 will multiply to give 12. 2 and 6. Negative 2 and negative 6. 3 and 4. Negative 3 and negative 4. Now, which of these pairs add up to positive 8? Well, right here, 2 and 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 plus 6 is 8. Now, once we have the magic pair of numbers here, we cannot stick them into the parentheses. We could when we were using the shortcut, but we can't here because we have the 3 up front. What we do with this information is we rewrite the original expression up here. 3x squared. But now we're going to take the 8x and we're going to split it. We're going to bust it up into 2x plus 6x. And then the plus 4 out in the back side. Okay? So we split up 8x into 2x plus 6x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on just the first two terms here, 3x squared and 2x. And we're going to try to factor out the GCF of those two. Well, 3 and 2 don't have anything in common. x squared and x, yeah, they both have an x in common. And that's it. So what's left over in the inside is 3x plus 2. Now we just look at the last two terms. What is the GCF of these two? 
Well, uh, looks like the 6 and the 4 both have a 2 in common, right? So I'm going to say plus 2 times in parentheses what's left over. After you divide out that 2, see 6x divided by 2 is 3x. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now notice that we have the 3x plus 2 in both places. That's exactly what we need. Now we can factor out 3x plus 2 from the x and the 2. So 3x plus 2 times, in parentheses, what's left over after we take out a 3x plus 2 from both places. What's left over? x plus 2. And that is what goes into our parentheses. 3x plus 2 and then x plus 2. Okay? So just a couple more steps involved when we can't use the shortcut. Now let's look at number 14. 2g squared minus 11g plus 12. I'm just going to rewrite this down here because I used way too much space on problem number 11. Okay. Now here, again, we cannot use the shortcut because we have a 2 out front. So what we're going to need to do is multiply 2 times 12, which is 24, and then we think of two numbers that multiply to equal 24. Add to equal what? Negative 11. Okay, let's see. Let's make a list of factor pairs of 24. 1 and 24, negative 1 and negative 24, 2 and 12, negative 2, negative 12, 3 and 8, negative 3 and negative 8. Um, Actually, the list should look very similar to what we did down here. Uh, 4 and 6, negative 4 and negative 6. There we go. What pair of numbers adds up to negative 11? Uh, this one. Negative 3 times negative 8 is positive 24. Negative 3 plus a negative 8 is negative 11. Okay? So once we have that, we're going to rewrite this as 2g squared... Now we're going to bust up. We're going to bust up the negative 11g. We're going to split it into negative 3g minus 8g plus 12. Now let's factor out the GCF. Let's see the GCF of the first two terms is just a g. So 2g minus 3 is what's left over after we factor out a g from the first two terms, okay? And then let's see about the next two terms. Well, in this case, we could have done it up here as well on the last problem, but we know that in order to factor this, we need to have 2g minus 3 over here. The question then becomes is what do we need to factor out of these last two terms in order to get 2g minus 3. Well, I hope you can see that it's a negative 4, right? If we factor out a negative 4, then we could see that if we put the negative 4 back in, negative 4 times 2g gives negative 8g back. Negative 4 times negative 3 gives a positive 12. Okay, so it works. And then finally, the last step is to factor out 2g min minus 3 from both places. So 2g minus 3 times g minus 4. And that is the final factored form.